Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shane. If this is your first time joining us, this is Shane's channel. Um, so, sorry I'm recording with an iPhone. This is my 2000 or 2001 Jeep Cherokee XJ. She has been through a lot, as you can see, she's kind of big. Um, just for comparison, she's, uh, I'm 5'11", she's a little bigger than me. So, she is on a four and a half inch lift. Um, Y'all seen it in the Malibu video at the end with the snow storm video. I was, uh, we was out playing around in it here in Indiana a mere week later. It is like 55 degrees and beautiful t-shirt weather. Things are melting. Uh, the dog is muddy, wherever she is. Chevy, where you at? There she is. She's just ran through the mud, having fun. But anyway, so I told you guys that I had some plans for the Jeep. We we're gonna do some stuff to it. I really kind of want to put, uh, I did the double den upgrade in it. So it's got a touchscreen radio, but it's a cheap crappy one. I would like to put a Sony XAV-1000 in it. Uh, Apple CarPlay, all that good stuff, because I like it. Um, this is a 2000. You can see the square here. That's where my uh, business magnets used to be. They flew off. I'm going to have to do vinyls for that. Um, but then, of course, up front here, you see my, I call this the sun. Uh, it's the absolute brightest light bar I could find on Amazon. I can't even send you the link to it because the link is no longer available. I tried to buy one from my truck recently. I don't remember what the lumens was on it, but it was like literally the brightest thing I could find in a 52 inch uh, curve. And when you turn this thing on, it, I don't care how dark it is, it illuminates everything. It's a good work light. Uh, when we play in the woods, when we party back in the woods, when we're camping, it works great. Um, these GS brackets here are what I used. They are pop riveted. Uh, let me see, let me show you. Underneath the rubber here, at the right angle, you should be able to see that it is pop riveted in there, um, whatever. Um, so they're pop riveted into the body, which works out really nice. Only one time have I ever, I actually had to replace this one because I ripped it off. Yeah, it was this side, uh, cause I was going down. You can actually see all the scratches and scarring up through here. But a, a very large tree branch grabbed this thing and uh, I just, I couldn't stop that. So I was sliding through the mud and you know, when, been having some cold snacks, as Derek calls them. Um, but she's got the LEDs in the front. And I would like to put the different housings here. I'd like to have a winch bumper up here. You know, there's a lot of stuff I would like to do with this Jeep. But today, well, not even really today because I don't, I won't have the parts. So today is Tuesday. So I guess I'll have them tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, we are going to work on. I had ordered these beauties off of the internet and the way these are going to work is it's the same as those uh, GS's so they're going to pop rivet down into here somehow or another hold my light bar I had a couple work pods up here you know I'll uh, mount that all up and that'll look a little more interesting for sure. Be able to, cause it's got the two spots there for the pods, which I do have four pods and I don't have anything to do with them. They came with the white bar. So I think we might try to install these. I don't know. Uh, some guy was custom fabbing them out of uh, California, I think. And I talked to another guy. He ordered the same ones and was putting them on his WJ Grand Cherokee. And he said he had to modify them just a little bit like where it, hooked into the hole here you had to bend a little bit whatever no work i'll make them work don't you worry um and then if i can get into the dark really that's another thing that aggravates crap out of me i keep replacing lock switches and they keep like going bad or something and you have to go over there and like punch the passenger side switchboard uh to be able to use the power locks super annoying <clears throat> um as you can see Chevy. Well, maybe you can't. Maybe you can. Chevy footprints everywhere because she's muddy today. But somewhere, 
There they are. There's two of them anyway. They got these little pods that go with the with the light bar. So yeah. But the main thing today, which kind of plays in because I've always kind of needed to block up. So this is on a four and a half inch lift. I guess I probably I don't know if I ever said that. It's on a four and a half inch lift, 33, 12, 5, 15 Iron Man. Uh, these are the All Country MTs. I think there's the the second version now. I don't know what they're called. I you've seen these. They're on my truck. They're on this. I've had them on every. I love these tires. But um, I had to take the plastic fender flares off because the tires are rubbing. Uh, the backs rubbed if I hit a bump, like and just barely. And then the front just touched right here on the back side. As you can tell, huge gap in the back, little gap in the front. Now, if you look at the Jeep overall, I don't know if I can do this, but the back is sitting lower than the front, as you can tell. It's uh, four and a half inches in the front, I think, and like three and a half inches in the rear is what come out to, because the leaf springs have settled, sagged, whatever. Um, so I always kind of figured I'd put a one inch block in the back and... That would take care of all my clearances. I put my fender flares back on. Because I like the way these look with fender flares. I don't like them all cut. And everybody wants to cut one up. This, other than this surface rust you see right here. And I, now, I do know that. Well, here's it. So, I'm going to spoil it. I had to order new leaf springs for the rear. Because as you can tell from this side, I'll give you just a little sneak peek. This side seems extra low in the rear. Now, what happened is... I was stopped and a guy plowed into the back corner of my Jeep here. I know it's hard to tell anything happened to it. You see the, see the dent right there? Right there? Uh, he was doing about 55 <laughs> freaking Honda Civic. Uh, totaled the car. Bounced off of me. I had already spun the wheel. Was reaching down to grab four wheel drive um, and get into the snow and get away from him. This is literally like last weekend so not long after the snowstorm uh but there was like no snow on the road this guy wasn't paying attention you know i i, I knew he was about to hit me because i seen him in the mirror and i heard ur, 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 where he was like bouncing and locking up his brakes hit me so hard that he bounced off of me and smoked a tree totaled his car and shoved me off and all he did to the ford jeep here was he broke that leaf spring shackle can you see it <laughs> yeah broke broke snapped her that's it there's not a lick of damage elsewhere i've been all over and under this thing and i don't know why that broke um because nothing else happened there's there's no wrinkles in the body lines there's no not, i had to take the plastic off because i had to drive it home because the guy didn't have insurance big freaking surprise right so i pulled the plastic off and everything uh which sorry I had already planned on putting a um, the aftermarket D-ring hitch tuck bumper, whatever the heck these Jeep guys call them things. I guess you, you, you cut here and tuck it, or you can get ones where you don't have to. I don't know. I'm going to spend some money on the Jeep eventually. But I had to order new leaf springs, so what did I buy? I bought the, four and a half, the ones that are set up for four and a half inch lifted Jeeps. So... Uh, and these ones will come with the, uh, because I did the old Adelief thing last time. Don't recommend that. So this is going to be the full spring stack, both sides, with three-inch wedges to roll the axle some, which I already have my transfer case dropped an uh, inch anyway. Uh, but this is going to do everything that I need it to do to make the Jeep drive even better, sit right, and if I still have to put a one-inch block, I might block the rear and puck the front just to get another inch or two out of it to clear the 33s better. I don't know yet, but I will have the leaf springs tomorrow and I already have uh, experience pulling bolts out of these XJ bodies. So I think we're gonna do us a little, um, a little uh, heating and oiling, PB blasting, you know, some looby-dooby 
and get this stuff cleaned up and ready for the bolts to come out because when the parts come in tomorrow, I need to get the Jeep put back together because I had to put all my tools in the mobile rig over there. So now that's the mobile rig again. And if it snows and we can't get around anywhere, the old lady's just gonna have to drive the Jeep. And I guess we're supposed to have another snowstorm. I don't know. One day we're having 50 inches and the next day it's like, oh, it's gonna be 60 and sunny. You never know around here. So uh, let's get this thing. Yes, this lift will lift this thing. It's done it before. So we're gonna block this thing up as much as much as we can and get the Jeep up off the ground. She's uh, sitting more funky. <laughs> but this is how the back's supposed to look. And then if you look over here, that's how it currently looks, which I would love that much clearance all the way around. But here you can really see what happened with that leaf spring. I mean, it just, it just sheared. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But I've been under it a time or two. And uh, I haven't found any other damage. So let me flip the camera around. And we'll go underneath real quick, take a peek, and maybe I'll show you guys a little bit about uh, how I lifted that thing last year. Okay, this is going to be kind of hard to do. I hope I don't need a flashlight, but I do know that I need the PV blaster. Uh, you look up in here, and obviously the rear, leaf, rear, rear section of the leaf spring bolts there. So we're just going to... Looby dooby that up as much as possible. Dang, I should have probably not done that until after I was done making it. Uh. <laughs> uh, this is hard. It's gonna be a lot of heating and heating my life, I'm sure. But, uh, Anyway, you can see that's just you bolted to the rear axle, and it's really not that hard. I mean, leave your shocks attached if you can, which I think we did last time. But uh, you leave the shocks attached, and you just drop it down. This one's not wedged or anything. It's uh, it's just uh, an extra leaf added in. Literally, that's, that's it um, on the stock springs. So you can count those. It's, what is that? Oh, the bottom one. Is that like that on both sides? Oh, it's just a plate. So it's just one, two, three, four, five leaves there. And I'm pretty sure the ones that come set up for uh, four and a half inch lifted has the same same setup same count same everything uh, but as you can tell everything under here other than me taking it mudding it's beautiful i did order um if you ever go to do shocks on one of these things you have to get you see right there and right there is those flag things that if you look here, um, the factory, come on camera, so where those two bolts are there, um, the factory ones break off, uh, so you use that flag thing, it like reaches all the way back there, and you just hold the handle, you know, like right here, and start the two bolts, and then tighten them, and you know, it solves that problem without you having to cut the body or anything. Um, other than that, obviously the drive shaft looks pretty wild right now, because the back end of the Jeep is sag down so funny but it's got the one inch spacers on the uh transfer case thing mount whatever you want to call it new rubber mounts no play in any of the drive shafts at all mufflers exploded we gotta do something about it because i'm sick of listening to it fart and rattle and all that uh but the this is going to be the problem area so you can get back here at the back you can spin 
twist, heat, air hammer. You can get that out. That's not a problem. Cut it if you have to. This one, on the other hand, goes to a nut that's like welded inside the body, which I think you can like eyeball through this hole. I think you can eyeball it. I don't think you can do much else. But the bolt comes in right here. I'm touching the head of it with my finger right there. It comes through and bolts in in here. So if that spins out in there, then you're really hurting. You got to cut you a hole in the body here and so on and so forth. So I'm going to try to looby doob all of that. And I'll probably do better than just doing this. But, <laughs> you know, soak her down. But we're just going to soak her down. And then I'll probably just come back to you guys after I get my leaf springs tomorrow when we're doing disassembly. Okay, new day, cold and rainy. Chip, <laughs> chip dog, what you doing, girl? What you doing, pretty puppy? Cold, rainy, most of the snow's gone. So, pictures. Anyway, I used to down at the end of the driveway there from where I plowed the driveway, but. Uh, anyway, leaf springs came in. Um, so, I guess I'm going to set up a time lapse. I guess I'd go over it real quick. I described them as being for the four and a half inch lift um, with the three degree wedge there. Um, the part number is, uh, let's see, I don't know if you guys can read that. 84 to 01 four inch rear XJ. Rough Country part number 8047D. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, so. Pretty simple, straightforward. Bolt them up. Bolt the axle up. Wow, I'm covering the camera and everything. I'm a professional. <laughs> uh -huh. But I'm gonna set you guys up on time lapse and uh, go from there, I guess. See what happens. Basically, my plan is to use the lift. I'll set the wheels down on the ground and unbolt stuff from the Jeep and then raise the body up off of the axle. Then I'll bolt the leaf springs, bolt the new leaf springs in, set them back down on the axle. Should work. We'll see. <laughs> seen I got the rear bolts worked out the nuts off anyway passenger side bolts already coming out no problem driver side she's wanting to stick a little bit I might have to get a little meaner with the torch uh, we're gonna soak it down for now with some uh, looby doob and work on the front bolts because everything where the axle is is all brand new and I uh, pretty sure I greased it and everything when I put it together so um, that should be fine. Yes, I am fully aware that I'm working next to a gas tank. Um, you see, sometimes you just have to risk it. I mean, this isn't a customer, this is mine. This is my shop on my property. 
if I blow up, I guess that's on me. But the tank has, the tank is plastic. It does not leak. And it has a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A shield thing. And the flames were on the other side of the frame rail. Not worried about it. Uh, don't freak out. I probably could have blocked it off better or something, but I don't know. I wasn't in there long enough to do anything. I mean, what do we got? Yeah, a few minutes. So I'm gonna go to the front side, which is right here. And uh, those bolts go into the frame as I showed you prior. So I'm gonna try to heat them through that hole and get them to break free so the, the welded nut doesn't break from the frame. Cause if it does, then I'm cutting a hole in the frame and not fun. Um, so I'm sure we're gonna have to get the air hammer out and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that stuff and uh, back to the fun of Time lapse. Sorry, my brain's not working today. <laughs> Here we go. springs out we just started installing this one and i was like justin we're not recording so now we're recording where are you gonna sit so you can watch i don't know maybe on the tire maybe in the wheel something like leaned up against the gun time lapse <laughs> Okay, so I gave up last night. It's a new day, nice and cold. Hi, Jibba Poopies. <laughs> but I had to go get some U-bolts. Um, me and Justin last night fought. Basically, we stuck this end first on the body. And then back here at the back, I used a pry bar see my I'm struggling I used a pry bar here I laid it up in here and used that to guide we used the jack to jack up this side and then I just had to do minor uh, wow 
Why am I struggling so bad? Mine are pulling here to get this lined up. Obviously, got to tighten down the nuts. Um, but right now, I'm working on the U bolts. And uh, then I just have to put the shocks on. And then it's done. We're going to go drive it. So, uh, time lapse, I guess. I don't know how much of that you missed, and it's probably because somebody called me. But she's bolted down. I have to tighten the uh, that bolt there and that bolt there on both sides uh, to be completely done. But I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but the back is definitely higher than the front. All right, guys. So some time has passed. It's warm outside now, as you can tell with my cowboy boots and shorts. <laughs> um, Jeep's fixed. Uh, that last clip you just saw was a month or two ago, probably two months. Rain's starting to pick up. Anyway, she's fine. Been driving her. She's still just a little low in the front uh, for fender players, so that's kind of a problem. But, uh, you know, we added a little backup camera there. She's just been my daily mobile service rig. I mean, it is as it is. It's just, she goes everywhere. Um, I do plan though, I have decals for it, for the business. I also have uh, something planned with uh, the wheels and the light bar brackets that we had discussed earlier in this video. Uh, so there'll probably be another part on this, um, doing uh, doing all the, all the other stuff want to get some bumpers for it original or eventually but um you know i i have kind of been watching through my videos and i don't necessarily like how i'm doing things i feel like i need to be more in depth uh like on the corvette i think i did all right with being in depth um <clears throat> i know i've got this thing here uh i got to find out if the motor is savable if not then it's got to get an engine either way i probably put a really in-depth video on that um and then i did get the carbs fixed for my bike i'm waiting for a few more parts to show up this week and i'll probably have a weekend video shape girl come here come on let's go inside out the rain sorry guys <clears throat> maybe i'll cut that out maybe i won't because everybody loves shape dog and in case you guys didn't know, she got hit by a car. That's why she's limping funny on her back leg. I have the camera footage. I have the vehicle. No license plate. And they didn't stop. They did not stop to tell me that they hit my dog. Come on, Chevy. Cut that. Anyway, uh, it's a little bit of a mess in here. I do have... Um, I purchased this Handler 190 uh for doing some fabricating stuff i did my atv trailer finally with it uh over the week uh i was kind of playing with it didn't really do a whole lot of recording or anything on that because i wasn't sure how it was going to go but as you can see the bike we have some more purple parts um yeah those two and this the only thing that i still have to do but the carbs and the airbox and everything are on. I went to change some fuel line and I broke the plastic nipple on the, for the fuel inlet on the carbs. Uh, so that's supposed to be here in a couple days. 
Uh, we also uh, installed a fancy, let me see. I don't know if it can be on without the key being on. Let me see. We put a light kit on. Oh yeah, you can't. Okay. So we put a light kit on Justin's bike, which is really cool because it does like all this different stuff, all these different colors. Um, but when you uh, when you squeeze squeeze brake, it all goes red for brake, obviously. So I'm going to install that on my bike and uh, I'll go in depth on how to do that. I think the kit, if you're interested, and I'll show it again in the video. Oh, uh, Justin must have took the box. It was over here. Uh, at least I thought it was. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, here's a straw, some tubing that I welded together. Uh, thanks for watching though. I've got some pretty decent content lined up and ready to go. Uh, more stuff on the Jeep, more stuff on the Corvette, uh, more stuff on the bike for sure. Uh, the old girl, she's, she's, she's almost there. She's about ready. Um, and of course, you know, it's just... There's, there's just, who knows, you know, we got the Cobalt, we got that Aura out there, I, you know, we got some different GM36 stuff to do, uh, definitely going to be going a little more into depth on stuff, especially like the next 36 I do, I've been writing down all my, uh, you know, torque values and stuff in a place that I can't lose it, because you can't misplace a wall, right, um, Chevy Dog here, she says bye, she says, oh, look at you, dad, I just want to play in the rain, He's a little boy right? Don't you, baby? He's your baby. Yeah. He's your baby. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want. We'll see you next time.